Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. My name is John Cameron, and I'll be your moderator this evening. Uh, I have uh, guests, Taylor Moritz and Tim Snowball. And um, what we're going to do is start off the show telling you a little bit about how we got in the liberty movement, and a little bit about what we're doing for a living right now. But first, um, you're going to want to watch this show regularly and over and over again, and there are many ways to do that. When the shows run live, uh, approximately two weeks after the show, you can see it on YouTube, and of course send links to all of your friends, neighbors, and relatives, so nine or ten people will get to watch the show. <laughs> and if you want to watch it on Access Sacramento, you can watch it at eight o'clock on Thursday on Channel 17 in the Sacramento area, uh, noon on Friday, or my favorite time, 4 a.m. on Saturday. Now, about me, uh, I always remember being a libertarian because um, really the freedom that's espoused in the libertarian movement mirrors nature, the nature that the socialists bring up all the time, the beautiful simplicity of competition, the strongest surviving uh, and the weakest dying off so that the, the species or the race is improved and the, 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 the herd or the pack is led by the best that's what we should be modeling our society after, and that's my intro. Now we're gonna, I'm going to turn to Taylor. Taylor, tell us how to pronounce your last name. Moritz. Moritz, and <laughs> you are? Um, I'm a reporter and writer for the Capital Morning Reports, um, which is a local publication in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. uh, came to the Liberty Movement actually with this last election, just having, I was working in a very uh, left, organization and a very right-wing organization Howard Jarvis um, simultaneously simultaneously mm -hmm. yes I was doing PR on the opposite side of the communications wheel yeah. but um, yeah so in doing that uh, besides having a headache every day switching <laughs> back and forth switching from from uh, distorted yeah. reality to reality on a regular <laughs> basis yeah. um, I started to realize that I was somewhere um, in the middle Mm. And, uh, yeah, that's how that came mm -hmm. to be. And middle, in your opinion, would be libertarian? Yes. Yeah, okay. In cool. my opinion, yes. I think that's middle-of-the-road libertarian. You don't hear that much in the completely liberal biased press, do you folks? So, <laughs> Tim Snowball, tell us uh, where you work. Pacific Legal Foundation. And a little <laughs> bit about what you do. Sure. My name is uh, Tim Snowball. I am a hopeful soon-to-be attorney at the Pacific mm -hmm. Legal mm -hmm. Foundation. I took the... July 2017 bar exam. Not that you remember it. No, 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 no. Only, only spent two months prepping. So, yeah. um, results are released in November. November. <laughs> that sounds like a quick technological marvel of uh, test grading. It's, it's government efficiency <laughs> at its finest. Um, <laughs> you probably don't want to say that until your final essay <laughs> scores are wait in. Wait until I, I uh, swear yeah. in. Okay. But um, yeah, I was always kind of a, a history uh, nerd when I was a kid. Um, I. Um, had memorized entire spans of the Constitution Declaration when I was in grade school. Um, always watched the news with my mom. When mm -hmm. I had gone back to college, I was lucky enough to have some very talented professors immerse me in the ideas of liberty, and they got me to read um, some John Stuart Mill and Eric Vogelin before they introduced me to Marx. So I had a good foundation uh, to combat uh, those kind of ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'm thrilled with my current position. Mm -hmm. um, for me, um, libertarianism was always kind of a recognition of reality mm. and it, it fits logically together um, individual humans are self-interested not because they're evil not because they're bad because it's survival mm. if you're going to have a government if you're going to have humans living in a community it's going to be run by humans who are self-interested mm. so how do you keep that in check well then there should be limiting principles what are those limiting principles and that's the brilliant thing about Jefferson and the Declaration is Jefferson lets you have it both ways. Um, whether your rights are God-given or whether these are self-evident truths, these are truths that are inherent in nature. Mm -hmm. And when you apply those limiting principles to government, then you have uh, just government. Mm. Or, or you don't have or it, <laughs> as the case may be now. So a little bit about, uh, I, f I forgot to talk about libertarian counterpoint. Um, it used to be called Libertarian Conspiracy years ago, and um, I kind of <laughs> like that a little bit better. But you can see it on, on YouTube after the fact, uh, about two weeks out. One of our wonderful volunteers, uh, and this is a completely volunteer-run show, and a, um, a shout-out of thanks to the folks in the control room and behind the cameras this evening. 
Um, you can see it about uh, a week or two after the show on YouTube. So uh, send that link to all of your relatives and friends who want to be enlightened about what life can be like without uh, the boot of the state crushing you at every move. You can watch it on Channel 17 Access Sacramento uh, at 8 o'clock on Thursday night or at noon on Friday, or my very, very favorite time, 4 a.m. Saturday, <laughs> folks, because I know we're all awake then. And so uh, we're going to lead off by talking about the Las Vegas shootings. This is a hot-button issue, uh, and whenever there is a mass shooting, uh, the, uh, the gun control people come out of the woods saying, see, 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 if only we control guns, this would never happen. And, and the, the liberal press uh, supports that and and unfortunately what what's really going on is the media is making hay and selling advertising space on the the pain and death and suffering of the backs of some folks quite innocent victims so this is the question were the Las Vegas shootings reason to rethink gun control or rethink prescribing drugs designed to deal with mental health issues or none of the above? And I'm going to turn to Tim for that answer. Do that in 30 seconds. No, you can take longer <laughs> than 30 seconds. Well, yeah. I, it's an absolutely tragic situation. Yeah. I don't think that there's anyone on any end of the political spectra, uh, spectrum that uh, is pro-murder, pro-mass violence, right? Mm -hmm. The question becomes, is the knee-jerk reaction that you see in the media is is the call to action we must do something something must be done is that the best basis for public policy mm. or or should we be thoughtful should we look at the fact that overall violence in the united states is down mm. drastically gun, gun violence in the united states is down drastically and when it comes to perpetrators uh, like the gentleman in in the las vegas incident the question is if you're going to introduce a policy I always think of Milton Friedman. It's not your intentions. Your intentions don't matter. You could have the best of intentions. Mm. The, ro the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Mm. The question is, what is the effect of that policy going to be? And I've yet to hear someone propose a policy that would have prevented the tragic events that happened mm. in Las Vegas. Mm. If someone uh, can propose that policy, I would be happy to consider it. I'd be mm. happy to debate it. Maybe mm. I would even become a supporter of it. Mm -hmm. But. What I don't think is a proper course of action is to make um, kind of knee-jerk decisions based upon emotion, uh, because I think that more often than not winds up exacerbating the problem rather mm. than solving it. Okay. So I know uh, the second part of the question is, it was my contention uh, when this happened that if they did a talk screen on the guy, that they would find he hmm. was on some kind of anti-psychotic anti or some kind of prescribed mood-altering drug. Um, pot smokers typically don't go shoot a bunch of people. They they <laughs> they get upset at the refrigerator on occasion because it's empty. But and I'm, I realize you might be thinking, uh, folks, that I'm trying to make light of this, and I'm not. Um, you know, one life is is too much to lose to a madman, much less 59. And and the folks that that were hit by the kind of rounds that the man was using. Um, many of them are going to face years of physical therapy and agony uh, to get back to normal. Many of them will never get full use of their limbs, perhaps their, their, their minds because of it. I'm not making light of it, but um, I want us not to, as, as Tim said, have a knee-jerk reaction and think that, that we can just suddenly talk about bump stocks, which I've never even heard of until this happened, uh, and think that somehow making those illegal is going to prevent this kind of thing happening in the future. Taylor, you've done some research on it. What's your feeling? Would, would something as simple as making a bump stock illegal prevent this kind of thing in the future? Um, the bump stock thing is a, it, it's, it makes it very complicated because if you don't know what a bump stock is, it's an addition to a rifle that allows um, the trigger recoil to be harnessed so that it gets a quicker fire. Mm -hmm. so, so in it, essence, it, the, may I kind of demo it? Yeah. What happens is you put the rifle in the bump stock, mm -hmm. you hold your finger on the trigger, trigger, and the recoil bounces the gun off of your bump stock so that it moves forward and hits the trigger and bounces mm -hmm. back. So mm -hmm. bounce, 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 or they say call it bump. I would call it bump stock. Yeah, they is call that, it, that's they how call it, works, it bump, right? bumping your rifle. Yeah. but. Um, 
Yeah, so it, it creates a spray that lands somewhere between automatic and semi-automatic. Mm. Um, but the interesting part about bump stocks is they actually haven't been used in mass shootings. Uh, the last one I think was in the 90s mm. that uh, a mass shooter had actually been found as a bump stock on one of his rifles. Um, it is true that the Vegas shooter did have a lot of bump stocks on mm. the, like his stockpile of, of rifles that he had mm. in the hotel room. Um, but in doing research on these bump stocks, um, the most interesting thing I found out was that you can bump your rifle without the use of a bump stock. Mm. You can create this apparatus literally with a string and a belt loop that'll uh, mimic what the bump stock does. Mm. Or you can just be a skilled enough uh, gunman that you could be using your finger in and of itself. And so that's complicated. And I know that Feinstein came out and tried to you know, say, we need to ban these bump stocks now. And the NRA is actually um, is kind of throwing them a bone, as you said mm -hmm. earlier, mm -hmm. um, by saying that yeah, we need to do, we need to review this. Um, In exchange for what? What mm -hmm. are they? What's their what's their play? Well, um, it's just to make it go away. Mm -hmm. make yeah, it go make away. it go away. But I th I think uh, you know any any skilled gunman knows that you don't need the bump stock to mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it does make it easier, um, well, but I, I, it doesn't mean that it's going to stop somebody from. Mm -hmm. The, the other good point was that you could be actually more tactical without a bump stock. Yeah. So you could Control theoretically your fire much, much more effectively. Exactly. Yeah. So, so it, you, depending yeah. on the skill of the perpetrator, mm. it, 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 a bump stock would be completely irrelevant. Mm. They probably wouldn't even want to use one. They'd want to and I, and snipe. I'll, I'll just throw in, and then Tim, I know you want to no. say something. Anybody, and I'm not going to say go look on the internet and figure out how to make one of these things, but if you, you look at it, basically it's a, a slide. Uh, you know, somebody in wood shop could make one out of wood. You, I mean, it's whenever the government says that illegalizing, like making it a six-round magazine, will stop this, then people mm -hmm. take four six-round magazines right. together and practice changing them mm -hmm. quickly, or, or they'll say that crowd down with the car. You, I mean. you, you have to to eject the magazine with a bullet. So what people do is design something that looks like a bullet but fits on their hand and makes it quick. Any any kind of uh, technical uh, contrivance that people try to put in the way, other smarter people, sm much smarter than people in government folks, will figure out a way around it. And, and not so even necessarily it's, smarter, it's, yeah. but more manic people, people yeah. who are, you know, they have obsessive mental illness. Mm -hmm. They're going to, that could be what the thing that they harp on. on. <laughs> and I mean, which is the second part of this conversation, yeah. but. Let, well, and the, I, I made a bet, not a, not really a bet because I wouldn't bet on something like this. But I said to one of the other one of the attorneys who has actually passed the bar, and I got to pick on. <laughs> he has no control over them getting his results back quickly, folks. Um, and said if they do a talk screen on him or a background check, uh, I'm. I think there's there's probably nine out of ten chance that the man was on some kind of antipsychotic, mm -hmm. uh, some drug prescribed by a mental health professional. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that it, that he he was at least prescribed medication, and that was Valium. And Valium has a tendency to trigger uh, psychotic episodes, or has can trigger psychotic episodes. Uh, the the man's uh, partner, wife, partner, partner, girlfriend, wife, girlfriend, I think. girlfriend, girlfriend in the said he was a kind, gentle man, and she couldn't imagine him doing this. Mm. Um, so. You know, unfortunately, what happens is that that this is is not the mass murder is a result of insanity, um, and and insanity is the issue that I'd like um, us to focus our resources on mm. because we do a terrible job in this country um, dealing with the mentally ill. I don't know who said it, but uh, society be can be judged um, on how it treats the most helpless. And people who are mentally ill are the most helpless, really. I mean, mm -hmm. physical ailments are easy to deal with. I'm not saying they're easy to deal with, but compared to mental illness, mm -hmm. um, the symptoms are, are um, you know, if, if you have a broken arm, your arm doesn't try to hide it from your body and say this arm's not broken. Mm -hmm. But if you have a mental, many mental illnesses, especially um, psychosis, um, are, are, are very tricky and your mind plays defensive games so that you really defend yourself against the illness that's going on. So that, I, 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 I would think that if we, we get into these conversations, 
the conversation should start not with the, the, the weapon that was used by the crazy person, but the conversation should start with the crazy person. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, it, it kind of ties in with, with what I was thinking, which is just, I think that the public sees these images, these cell phone images, mm -hmm. and then watches this coverage on CNN, and it just makes you sick to your stomach. Mm -hmm. You cannot believe that someone would do this. Mm -hmm. it, it boggles the mind. Mm -hmm. But then, it, just to circle back to my point, what do you do, how do you prevent someone who hasn't shown signs, to my knowledge, of mm -hmm. mental illness, mm -hmm. is not going on the kinds of political or religious rants on social media that they've looked to in the past to mm -hmm. identify someone mm -hmm. as potentially a problem. Uh, to my knowledge, this man did not display any of the classic warning signs. Mm -hmm. For all intents and purposes, his family says he was an affable guy, mm. you know, professional gambler, he's hanging out at the casino and whatnot, right? What law do you pass mm. to stop someone mm. intent on committing murder? Mm. The idea that you can restrict bump stocks or a type of weapon and someone who is intent upon committing capital murder mm. is going to be dissuaded from committing that act because of the weapon mm. has happened to be outlawed you know, he's already decided to break the law. Mm. And, and so um, I just, I, I don't know. And, and so it's a terrible thing. Mm. Um, so we've seen, and to add, I didn't mean to interrupt, you closing or may sure, I Sure, sure. Just in regards to the, to the mental health issue with, with prescriptions, I mean, mm. my, my experience um, and those I know, um, it's much easier for a doctor to write a prescription than to, I'm not saying all doctors, but easy to write a prescription and kind of think that that's going to solve the problem mm. when uh, someone much may need much more individualized care. Mm. Mm. It's also, and I don't want to throw stones that uh, people who go into these fields go into them and make tremendous sacrifices over many, many years to get to the point where they can try to help people. So I'm not saying there's a, uh, a complete monetary focus, but the way psychiatrists get paid now, uh, you can see a whole lot more patients and prescribe them the pill than you can um, and, and charge good money for doing that, then you can set up um, the years of, of counseling um, hmm. that many of these people need. So maybe that's something we take a look at. And then back to your point about making, um, making a bump stock illegal and thinking that someone can't make one or that is somehow going to um, prevent a crime from happening, um, I remember some individuals taking uh, one of the conveyances that allows me to go on wonderful trips to foreign countries and uh, running it into the Twin Towers not that long ago. So uh, man's ingenuity, especially uh, for the cause of evil, is limitless. And uh, how many people are we seeing in uh, London, in England, using cars, vans, and trucks as weapons? Um, evil will find a way. Evil will find a way. So do we want to talk about this anymore, or should we move on to the next one? What do you think? I think we can move on. Okay, all right. Can Trump, people had, I, I came up with this, folks, so you can blame it on me. Can Trump handle Kim Il-jung? And then that was the headline I saw, and I, and I thought to myself, what does that mean? So my question was, uh, does he need handling? And we touched on, on this a few shows ago, and we talked about it. I don't think we, we did it to the extent that we should have, which is why I brought it up as a subject again. Um, is, it, is it the business of the United States of America to be the world's policeman, hmm. uh, to, to look <clears throat> at dangerous people around the world and decide this one's dangerous enough for us to step in, whereas uh, you know, in, in Africa, uh, when Hutus and Tutsis were killing themselves off to the tune of 700,000 people in six weeks, we did not step in, but because it's a... Uh, uh, a country that we have an economic uh, interest in, their border to the south and also Japan, it's very important to us. Just kind of throw it out there. Uh, can, if anybody can handle um, the rocket man, is it uh, Dotard? Uh, <laughs> and because um, that's what Kim Il Jung apparently calls uh, Donald Trump, a doddering retard. Um, does he need to be handled? Is it Trump's job? Is it our job? Should we at some point step in and be the world's policeman? Um, who wants to respond to that? Do you want to respond to that, Taylor, or would you like to, Tim? I don't think Trump has uh, not assumed that position, <laughs> especially via social media accounts. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, these are 
two guys with big egos that are easily bruised. I'm shocked by that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's a slew of, of tweets, and whether people like to say that tweets are important or not, there's still a form now, uh, more especially than ever, of diplomacy. And uh, he's, Tweet diplomacy. He's not being very <laughs> diplomatic. I mean, they're literally calling each other names, mm, right. like it's on the schoolyard. So mm. uh, whether or not he can handle him, him I think, is uh, it's kind of uh, in the past, and it's mm. already going. Mm. <laughs> they're already creating that kind <laughs> of contentious relationship, and there's no going back. Now. We don't think if, if somebody took uh, Trump's phone away and Kim Il Jung's phone away that this would all go away. No, you think it's <laughs> uh, it started. The gauntlet has been thrown. The schoolyard kids <laughs> have drawn the line in the sand, and one has said, "Step over it," <laughs> and the other one's <laughs> taking a look. That's <laughs> what it feels like. Tim, what's your take on this? Well, I mean, it, it's almost. Um like there was a tautology kind of assumed in your question. I mean, the U.S. has been the world police mm. post-World War II. We mm. are the world police. And the, the question now becomes, since we don't have to have Congress declare war anymore, I guess that's kind of a, one of those old things swept under the uh, historical rug. Then, wait, <laughs> hold on to your backup. Isn't there this thing called the Constitution? That old throwback? Th that, no, 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 that no. That no. says that uh, no, we no, need no. to declare war before we no, can no, wage no, war? No, no, no. Just to go back to my con law professor in law school, every time we brought up the Constitution, he said, that's just a reminder. That's just a reminder. Let's focus on what's going on uh, in the present. But it's just a reminder. I go off the <laughs> it's <laughs> a sign we passed on the road a long time ago, folks. Um, that old constitution, that tattered document. You know, go I, on. No, I just I mean like when I when I was a freshman in high school, I was a skinny little kid. Okay, yeah. so I think that North Korea starting a problem with the United States would be like me at 14 years old walking up to the biggest guy on the football team and slapping him across the face. Right? Mm -hmm. Did it you does, do that? It doesn't. I did not do that, but mm -hmm. I. You know, yeah. it's one of those things I think about. No, but that's why you're a lawyer. You get, <laughs> get him in the courtroom. You watch out. Folks. It's yeah. the the idea that North Korea is going to start a problem with the United States. I think is nil. Mm. I think that a lot of this is driven by the corporate media cycle. Mm. I think a lot of this is drummed up. And you know, when I I had taken some international relations classes and stuff in college, I mean, there's there is a certain legitimacy that is added to nation states post uh, World War II when they acquire a atomic bomb, mm. all right? Pakistan, India, mm. China, it's been, France, it's, it's Great been, Britain, It's US, been argued Soviet that it has less Union. to do with ever using that bomb. There's only been two atomic bombs dropped in history. And Who more. dropped those, as a reminder? Well, US? Yeah. They were dropped on cities with civilians <laughs> in them? But in, that's indeed. a whole different in the, show, indeed. folks. Uh, just the point being that a lot of times becoming a nuclear power is seen by nation states as a legitimizing factor, mm. right? Mm -hmm. For Kim Jong Il, or for him, for his people, the internal politics of North Korea, mm. and it, it's like you know we had discussed, I think previously. I think that human beings gravitate towards liberty, mm. and I think that you now have an authoritarian regime in North Korea that will not last forever. Mm. I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know how it's going to happen. Mm. I don't know enough about it. Mm. But my, my thought is that human beings strive toward liberty. And to the degree where you've seen states like China that are still mm -hmm. communist, but it's so interesting that to the degree that they've introduced market principles, you've seen the economy double in size and all these other indicators and the lives of the poorest people have now been lifted, mm. and I think that that is uh, a economic scientific truth that you cannot get around. So I don't know enough about the North Korea incident to speculate as to where it's headed, but I do know that um, I don't foresee a war starting over uh, some tweets. But it is fun to read. No, Taylor, I what don't do you think? see it either. War, but war I, or no war? I well, and the question I thought was like <clears throat> more: Can they handle each other uh, being? Diplomatic with one yeah. another, not yeah. necessarily. Will we go to nuclear? So know. who wins the tweet war kind of thing? <laughs> you know, it's it's laughable, funny stuff, and I, you know, I even find myself laughing at Trump's tweets mm. just because I think I have a good sense of humor and I can handle a more crass, you know, person. Mm. But I think there is uh, a point where you know you got to grow up a little bit and mm. and and have some sense of you know. 
Obama wasn't my favorite president, and I don't agree with everything that he did, but he did hold himself and the country in a very respectful way. Mm. Um, so I think, yeah, you're going to cause a lot of unrest with civilians, especially with the media cycle, mm -hmm. sensationalizing everything the way that it does, um, if you're handling this, uh, you know, kooky leader thousands right. and thousands of miles away uh, in this manner. It's just not, yeah. it shouldn't even be an issue. He we have our own kooky leader, exactly. but we, we don't need to waste time with that kooky leader. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Why don't we, why don't we, I wish we could put this to bed forever. We could, we could have talked about the first one, the whole show. We're going to try to get, get through in the few minutes we have left, or at least um, bring it out and talk about it, the, the next item, which is more than <coughs> half of all California students miss English standard, even more fail at math, is it time for school vouchers? Is it time to go away from government schools? We used to call them public schools, but let's face it, folks, they're government schools, and go toward a more market-driven approach to education. Taylor, what do you think? Um, well, this one's kind of personal to me because I grew up in Stockton, and I went to, and everybody knows Stockton is not, you know, California's brightest city um, but I, I grew up in you Stockton. You don't want to say that in certain parts of town <laughs> in Stockton. Well no I mean yeah. not that there's not good people in it but as far as you know the schools are, are, are underperforming in most of you know the suburban areas and uh, the, the particular school I went to is actually had such a low graduation rate that the state stepped in and was going to shut it down. Uh, we were on our last leg we had to get a new principal you know completely trash a bunch of teachers that weren't performing uh, and still, did they I, fire any teachers? Did teachers get fired? No, anymore? teachers didn't get fired, huh. but the principal did get. People removed. that produce the bad product don't get fired. Yeah, really. it was horrible. Uh, to where my parents ended up moving here to put us in better schools, and I was so far behind as a freshman. I had to get freshman in high school. As a freshman in high school, I had to get retutored and. Uh, I really wish that there would have been a charter school option for me <laughs> because I was a smart kid. I was, you know. In the, in the higher percentile of my class, but there was just not enough mm -hmm. resources. The teachers weren't motivated. Mm -hmm. They were tired of dealing with the behavioral issues, mm -hmm. and they couldn't do much about the behavioral mm -hmm. issues. So they were limited by their own work rules. Exactly. And it was by like, by uh, tenure and all the rest of that. And that, the show has apparently uh, flown by. <laughs> we only have a couple of minutes left. Before the, before the show, Taylor was telling me that... Uh, that five topics was too much. Apparently, she's right because we barely That's covered two and a quarter. This <laughs> evening, folks, they're pretty important <laughs> ones, though. So, on that note, I'm going to thank you very much, uh, audience, and thank you, Tim Snowball, thank you, Taylor Martz, for being on the show, being lively guests, speaking your minds, and supporting libertarian principles. Thank you very much, audience out there. I think all seven of you. Oh, wait, six. Somebody fell asleep. No, there's, <laughs> there's more than that, folks. Tell your friends and neighbors to watch us on uh, Channel 17 here in Sacramento and constantly on YouTube. Watch us again and again. Like us a lot and send us to all your friends and neighbors. On that note, thank you so much and have a wonderful evening.